Could this be the best monitor to buy right now? 4K resolution with a 120 hertz refresh rate, one cable laptop connectivity with a whopping 140 watts of power output, huge port selection for accessories on the back that is also a Thunderbolt 4 hub, built-in KVM switch for those with multiple computers, and some other minor changes that just make sense. Now, I've been making videos on Dell's UltraSharp lineup for a few years now. Uh, two of the most popular models being the 4K 60Hz U2723QE and the 1440p 120Hz Thunderbolt 4 U2724DE. And this brand new version from Dell, the 2025U2725QE, uh, is essentially the love child of these monitors, taking the best features from both and combining them into this one super monitor. That being said, although it very well could be the best monitor, uh, particularly for MacBook users, there are some things that you should know first, so let's just get straight into it. Note that this video is not sponsored by Dell in any way. Uh, I purchased this monitor and every single Dell monitor on this channel with my own money. Now, you're probably somewhat familiar with the U2725QE by now, uh, based on the previous generation, so I'll speed run a few things first. The overall build quality is pretty solid. Uh, minimal squeaking or flexing, heaps of stand adjustability with, of course, a Visa mount on the back, uh, monitor arm I recommend is linked down below by the way and the overall color scheme and design just looks pretty good overall especially the tiny bezels and absolutely zero branding visible from the front. Now obviously this monitor is designed primarily for laptops so the main connectivity method is going to be via the included USB-C Thunderbolt 4 cable. Now that'll give you a 4K 120Hz variable refresh rate output. Uh, it also connects any devices plugged into the monitor to your laptop and also provides up to 140 watts of power delivery versus just 90 watts in the previous versions. So even if you have a big and power hungry 16 inch, you know, M4 Max MacBook Pro that ships with a 140 watt charger, by the way, the monitor will provide enough juice to charge the battery, even if you're doing something really demanding like rendering or, you know, playing a game. The built-in USB hub and port selection have a few new updates as well. Firstly, that HDMI port is now HDMI 2.1, so you can connect secondary devices like a gaming console or desktop PC and still get the full 4K 120Hz image via HDMI. Otherwise, there's a DisplayPort 1.4 port uh, and a second one for daisy chaining and additional monitor. There are also additional USB-A and USB-C ports compared to previous versions. All of these are 10 gigabits per second speed and you get the same 2.5 gigabit ethernet port for connecting a NAS or a fast home network. So all up, essentially, uh, you no longer need a desktop dock. Just plug everything into the monitor. Also, I swear Dell watches my videos because my biggest complaint about the quick access ports on the bottom on the previous versions is that they're really difficult to access when sitting in front of the monitor. So check this out. I mean, come on, how slick is that? And yes, they do have power output to charge phones and other devices. Note that there are no built-in speakers, although there is an audio out port and also no built-in webcam, but the power supply is built in. So there's no big brick required, just a power cable. Now the big upgrade over the previous U2723QE version is that this built-in hub is now Thunderbolt 4 rated, AKA the monitor can communicate with your computer with a 40 gigabits per second bi-directional bandwidth, which should easily handle data like that uh, 4K 120 hertz image output on top of any devices plugged into the USB hub. One caveat here is that even though it's technically a Thunderbolt 4 hub, uh, there's only one Thunderbolt 4 downstream port that you can actually plug Thunderbolt compatible devices into. It's primarily designed to daisy chain multiple monitors together, but I tried plugging my super fast Thunderbolt SSD into it and found the write speed was about 30% slower when the SSD is connected through the monitor. But the read speed is nearly identical, which for me, uh, is more important. So overall, yes, you can technically attach Thunderbolt devices like an additional USB hub or 
you know, a super fast SSD, just be aware that you may not get the full Thunderbolt speeds. There's also the same auto KVM switch built in. So if you have a dual Mac and PC setup, for example, as soon as you change the display input, everything plugged into the ports on the back, like a mouse and keyboard, automatically connects to whatever computer you're currently using. The whole process takes about two button presses and four seconds. Now, if you are someone who needs to use Windows, but you only have a Mac, or you don't wanna have a separate Windows computer, you can run Windows directly on your Mac using a program called Parallels. And big thanks to Parallels for supporting my channel and sponsoring this section of the video. Now, Parallels is officially authorized by Microsoft and allows you to run Windows 11 and Windows applications on your Mac. You can access over 200,000 Windows apps to work, study, and play. For example, if there's an app that doesn't work on Mac OS, you can install it on Parallels. This is great for specialized Windows software like MATLAB, ANSYS, or SOLIDWORKS, among others. Or if you just prefer the Windows version of Office 365, you can use something called Coherence Mode to run Windows applications directly in Mac OS, as though they were native Mac apps. Parallels is super easy to install. You can access all of your Mac's files within Parallels, and it supports external displays up to 4K and 120 Hertz. So I can use my monitor and MacBook screen as I normally would, including playing some classic Windows exclusive games that don't work on Macs. So check out the link in the description of this video and use code Liam to get 20% off parallels for your Mac. Okay, moving on, the menu system on the U2725QE gets a nice update too. Uh, the UI is bigger, easier to read, and actually looks really good, at least in my opinion, uh, compared to some of the horror shows I've seen on other brands. The shortcut menu is pretty functional. Uh, you can edit shortcuts and flick between them with the control joystick on the back. Now, perhaps the biggest upgrade on this monitor is the new 120 hertz variable refresh rate, uh, which is obviously increased from 60 hertz on the previous U2723QE. So this is now going to perfectly match the Pro Motion screen on your MacBook Pro that also has a 120 hertz variable refresh rate. Now it really comes down to personal preference, how big of a deal this upgrade is. Uh, for me personally, I really hate moving between my 120 hertz MacBook screen to a 60 hertz monitor. Uh, it just feels really clunky and jarring when scrolling or switching between apps or even just looking at the cursor moving around the screen. 120 hertz just feels much nicer to use. Note that often macOS will set the default screen refresh rate to 60 hertz for external monitors. So make sure you go into system settings, displays, and then check the refresh rate is set to either 120 hertz or variable. Variable just means the refresh rate will change up or down according to what's happening on the screen. If you're just looking at a static text document with no movement, for example, uh, it'll drop lower to reduce power usage. But if you start moving things around or playing a game, it will increase. Same as your MacBook Pro Motion screen. Which leads me into the gaming performance of the U2725QE. Look, it's a pretty simple answer. Uh, does it work well for gaming? Yes. Does it replace a proper gaming monitor? Absolutely not. Now look, that 120 hertz refresh rate, although not as nice, obviously, as a proper gaming monitor's 144 hertz or more, it is still really appreciated when gaming, assuming, of course, you have a system powerful enough to push 120 frames a second at a 4K resolution. I have an RTX 3090, and at 4K, uh, it really struggles sometimes. The main issue though is the response time. Pretty much every single gaming monitor out there has a response time of one millisecond or less. On this monitor, the default response time is eight milliseconds. It's just not fast enough for those competitive shooters like Counter-Strike, Call of Duty, or Valorant, for example, and you will notice the delay. That being said, it works perfectly for more chilled gaming, uh, like your single players, your PvE games, uh, like Helldivers 2 or Ready or Not, or even those more competitive PvP games for those who just play for fun and aren't too fussed about having a super duper gamer computer with the ultra low response times. Now, yes, you can decrease the response time from eight milliseconds to five milliseconds in the settings, 
but I found that this did introduce some pretty visible ghosting in the more fast paced games. But you know what? I am totally fine with its average gaming performance. I mean, it's a productivity based monitor, right? Like you're spending eight hours a day, mostly looking at text and emails with maybe a bit of gaming at the end of the day. And it's perfect for that. Now, taking a closer look at the panel itself, again, it's very similar to previous models. When testing color accuracy, I found it still extremely good on par with the Apple Studio display, but unlike the Apple Studio display that has a glossy screen option, the Dell comes with a matte anti-glare screen as standard. Now this isn't the same plastic coating crap that peels and just looks awful that you get on some of the cheaper monitors. Uh, it's actually quite good quality. And most of these videos showcase the matte coating by putting the camera at an extreme side angle, which obviously makes the colors look like crap. So just disregard those shots. When I was actually sitting in front of the panel, I couldn't see any noticeable impact on colors or text sharpness when viewing the panel straight on. Now I'm a previous glossy monitor enthusiast who now actually prefers matte, uh, unless I'm in a room where I can perfectly control every light source to minimize reflections. But I also know some people just prefer glossy panels as well. Also, I was pleasantly surprised to see brightness levels significantly improved over previous models. Me personally, I found it bright enough for my usage. During the day in my office, I had it set to a maximum of around 80%. Uh, and then at night, I would drop it down to like 70 or 60%. One major change to the panel though is Dell's new implementation of their IPS black technology, which increases contrast from 2000 to one on the previous ultra sharp panels to the new 3000 to one ratio. It's supposed to produce deeper blacks with less of that washed out white IPS glow uh, that you usually see due to the backlight on IPS monitors. In fact, Dell claims this new contrast ratio results in 47% deeper blacks than conventional IPS panels. Uh, in real life though, I found it definitely does make a difference. You will notice darker scenes do look noticeably better compared to your typical monitor with a 1000 to one contrast ratio, but it's still obviously nowhere near comparable to OLED technology, but you know, it's a nice little upgrade. Backlight bleed is about what you'd expect for an IPS panel too. During normal use, it wasn't an issue for me, at least on my particular unit. So now that you're familiar with the U2725QE and all the new improvements, there's only one question remaining. Should you choose it out of all of the other monitors out there? Now to make this comparison a little bit simpler, I'm not gonna talk about budget options like a basic $200, you know, 1440p monitor. At this price point, and for MacBooks in particular, the choice really comes down to two things, a 5K resolution or a 120 Hertz refresh rate. Which one do you want? Because you can't have both. All of the 5K resolution monitors currently available are only 60 Hertz and will be for the foreseeable future. And all the 120 Hertz or more monitors only go up to a maximum of 4K. Now the pros of the 120 Hertz refresh rate are pretty obvious. Like I mentioned before, it perfectly matches your MacBook's ProMotion screen, is more pleasant to use than 60 Hertz and is also great for gaming. However, a 5K resolution means 77% more pixels compared to 4K. So everything from text to UI elements will look sharper and clearer, but it's not a night and day difference like some people make it out to be. You really have to put both side by side and compare to see that difference. 4K on a 27 inch monitor is pixel dense enough for probably 90% of people. Now, side note here, there is a 32 inch version of the U2725QE, the U3225QE. It's identical apart from price and of course size. Note that the pixel density will be obviously less on the 32 inch screen and you will notice individual pixels much more than on the 27 inch screen. It's simple maths, right? You have the same amount of pixels, but on the 32 inch, 
they're more spread out. It's almost like looking at a 1440p resolution. Also, there is an ultra wide version as well, the U4025QW, again, almost identical. Uh, I'll include a link to that below. Now, the other issue with 4K is that it does not scale perfectly within macOS. Here's a quick crash course on why this is important. You know how you can change how zoomed in or out everything appears on the screen in system settings and displays? There's a few options, but the one that looks best is 1440p. The problem is that macOS can only scale up or down by a factor of two. The vertical resolution of 4K is 2160 pixels. 2160 divided by 1440 does not equal two, it's 1.5, which means each pixel is kind of split resulting in a slight blurriness around text and UI elements. Now, to be clear, it's not a huge difference, despite what some people in the comments and in other videos will say. Uh, you probably wouldn't even notice it, but it is there. 5K monitor does not have this issue because it will scale perfectly. Now, there is a slight work around four 4K monitors. There's a free app called Better Display, and this not only slightly improves blurriness, but provides additional scaling options on top of the default macOS ones, like 3008 times 1692 or 2304 times 1296 to make the scaling slightly larger or smaller than 1440p if you prefer. A uh, quick pro tip here, and if you like this, you better hit that subscribe button. Better Display also allows you to change the monitor brightness either using the app or the keys on your keyboard, which is much nicer than fumbling around on the monitor. So we have 4K with the better display scaling improvement and 120 Hertz versus 5K. Now the decision really comes down to your day-to-day -day usage, right? Like if you're a hybrid user who prioritizes productivity, but you also do some entertainment on the side, like maybe a bit of gaming, maybe just 60 Hertz screens are unbearable for you. The U2725QE is the choice in my opinion. Out of all other monitors out there, it is seriously almost perfect. But if you have no need for that 120 Hertz refresh rate, uh, you know, maybe you just focus on work that's mainly static productivity tasks, also involving a lot of text or Maybe you're a designer who needs that perfectly scaled 5K resolution. A 5K monitor would be the only real competitor to the Dell here, in my opinion. Like the Apple Studio display, which is more than twice the price of the Dell, admittedly, or a cheaper 5K alternative like the BenQ PD2730S, which also has Thunderbolt 4. Just bear in mind, alongside the 60 Hertz refresh rate, the built-in hub is not as good as the Dell's. As for my personal opinion on the whole, you know, 5K versus 120 Hertz decision, I don't believe there's a big enough difference between 4K with the better display scaling improvement versus 5K to justify the trade-off of not getting 120 hertz and you know all the other really nice features of the U2725QE. Yes, on paper the 5K has 77% more pixels and things do look a little sharper, but when you sit the appropriate amount of distance away from the monitor, that real life difference isn't that noticeable, at least in my opinion, after using them both side by side. But again, it really depends on what you spend most of your time doing on the monitor. So yeah, insanely good monitor, insanely good value. Also bear in mind the U2725QE is brand new. So the usual, you know, 10 to 15% price reduction on resellers like Amazon may not have kicked in yet, uh, but I will leave links in the description of this video to all of the best prices I could find and I will update them regularly for all of the monitors featured in this video.